Minecraft's enchantment table used to look like this. And do you remember when mine shafts used to be built with full blocks? And these are the best redesigns Mojang's added to Minecraft. And hey, YouTube tells me the fastest anyone's ever subscribed to the channel is two seconds flat, but I think we can do better. So to beat that record, speed run to that white subscribe button down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Minecraft vexes are annoying, and unfortunately that hasn't changed. But what has is that they're a lot less ugly now. See, the original vex had kind of the same head as the wither skull texture, but now they look a lot more akin to a corrupted allay, which also gives a fun bit of lore to Minecraft. I mean, why are the evokers trapping the allays? Well, it's to turn them into vexes the same way they turn blue sheep into red ones. I think that's pretty cool, and it fits a lot better into Minecraft, even though I prefer they don't because, uh, yeah, still annoying. Even though most of us like to change our skins in Minecraft, that doesn't change the fact that Mojang likes to change the skins of the actual Steve and Alex bases. And not too long ago, Steve and Alex got a pretty big change to how they look, that being giving them actual depth to their skins, as well as proper shading, and importantly, Steve got his beard back. I always thought he looked better with it anyway. And thankfully, they don't blink like they do over on Bedrock Edition. I don't care how good Steve and Alex look, that'll always be cursed. Did you know zombies didn't always used to drop rotten flesh? Yeah, back in the early dev versions of Minecraft, Hotch didn't know what they were supposed to drop. So the solution obviously was feathers. Yeah, upon death, these could drop up to two feathers when you'd kill them. And it wasn't until rotten flesh was added in as a separate item that it made it a much better design. I mean, not that rotten flesh is particularly useful. That would have to wait until we actually got cleric villagers, but it makes a lot more sense. The only times I should get feathers for killing a zombie is if I'm killing a baby zombie chicken jockey. Past that, it's just way too weird and has way too many questions for how they're actually made. When the enchanted table was first added into Minecraft, the early versions of it actually showed that it wasn't made out of obsidian, which begs the question, what was it made out of? Well, cobblestone. Yeah, it doesn't seem as magical, right? And if you look at the original texture, it really didn't seem that way either. I mean, there wasn't even a red carpet put on top like this, though there was a version of that that was added in, though still with the cobblestone, it looks more like the bottom of a piston than an enchanting table. And while I will admit it would be nice to be able to craft a cheaper enchanting table, I could barely get obsidian in a PvP server as it is. But if it means I have to look at this, I'm much gladder that we have the actual current design. One of the most classic Minecraft traps is this one made out of four doors and a pressure plate. And if you haven't played Minecraft long enough to remember this, then the way that it would play down is actually pretty simple. You walk inside of this phone booth, the pressure plate activates all the doors, and you're stuck. But what Lamini did here to redesign this makes it a lot scarier and a lot more certain to actually get newer players. Here, instead, it's made out of iron doors, and as soon as you go onto that pressure plate, you'll fall 80 blocks straight into the warden's den. And it needs to be 80 blocks high, otherwise you'll hear the warden, which makes it both harder to get out of and harder to survive. A good combo for a trap. Back when Mojang was in the process of developing how frogs would look in the game, the early textures didn't look like what we're familiar with today. And while there was a lot of variations, I think this green one with red eyes has to be the most hideous. I mean, I get it's supposed to look like a tree frog, but ugh, even looking at the way at how it would croak, not a fan of these. And while it is unfortunate that we didn't get the blue texture added in, looking at the rest of these early frog models, if it had come with that, I would have preferred them not at all. The ones that we have now are so much better. Minecraft's end portal's iconic, but it wasn't always that way. And I dare say that if it looked like this, it would have been iconic for all the wrong reasons. Since back in the third pre-release for beta 1.9, end portal frames looked like this blue and white mess, more like glass than anything. Oh, and they'd also drop as an item if you blew them up. Yeah, that's a little weird. I guess this would have fit better when the end dimension was gonna be the sky dimension, but I think the current design that we have today is undoubtedly a better redesign. Now, the warden's a pretty scary mop. I mean, look at how me and my friends reacted when we first showed it off. But when you see it in broad daylight, it's kind of cute. It fits in Minecraft. However, some of these old designs of the warden, I could not say the same about. And instead being developed around the fear tripophobia, I think that was just a horrible design connection for this. Where instead, it wasn't called the skull, it was actually called the hollow. And here it was a creature that was being overtaken by just this rot that crept over its body. But then you got this one on the end that just looks like it has a Waluigi mustache and nose. <laughs> Which I'm also glad that we didn't get. We don't need more jokes about this thing. When you first look at the old Minecraft cow texture, you might not think it's terrible, but you can definitely tell that something's off. And since then, Mojang has added in the cow's horns and also made them a lot less darker than they were in that original design. Which is definitely an improvement, but it is funny to note that Mojang's 
also moved around the cow horns several times to try and get it right. Sometimes being further back on the head, sometimes being inside of the head, and now being overlapping with the ear. Which is better? I've got no clue. But all of them are better than the original, so I'll take that. In the early days of Minecraft, you could not play without realizing how disgusting Netherrack looked. Easily one of the ugliest blocks that existed in the game. And so, when Jappa joined the team, one of the big changes was to the Netherrack texture. And that's why, as a snapshot 18w43a, Netherrack was changed forever. It does not take long looking at the difference of these two to just see how much better it is. I also think this just blends better with how the nether brick looks. Before, it looked a lot more like the flesh biome that you'd find in something like Biomes of Plenty. Which is to say, gross, and I don't need it in my base game. Now clearly, I'm someone who likes the color red. So you know that if I'm arguing against the color red, it has to be something special. And that's why, even though I loved the original red beds that we had in Minecraft, it's safe to say that it was a better redesign to have a whole bunch of other bed colors to play with since 1.12's World of Color update. I mean, I'm all for players having choice with how they want to build. So 16 versus one? Yeah, it's a tough argument to make for just red. And personally, I'd love for this to go a step further, allowing us to add different banner patterns to our bed sheets. But until we get that, the only creeper bed sheets you're gonna have are on your beds in real life. Up at this point, you probably heard the story of how a failed pig model ended up becoming the creeper. But that's not the only funny looking pig that we originally had in Minecraft. Since back in early versions of the game, the first pig texture that we ever saw originally had eyes that were front facing instead of derping out to the side. This is the face of a pig that's reconsidering its life's choices. And it seems like Mojang reconsidered it too, since not only would they change how it looks, but they also made it so that it wasn't completely flat in the face, extending the snout out and making it look a whole lot better. Now, when you look at horses in Minecraft, some might actually argue that they've downgraded in the way that they look, since the models have been changed to have a lot less detail than they did before. But regardless of which one of those you prefer, I think we can all agree that it's a major redesign considering how horses used to look in the game. See, back in the April Fool snapshot for Minecraft 2.0, Mojang actually did add in horses before we even got them in 1.6. But really, these were just retextures of the cows and pigs that you'd find in the game. And as you'd expect from a horse that was retextured on a pig and cow model, these looked pretty scuffed. And so while this wasn't an official update, if you're asking how horses originally looked in Minecraft, this does technically count. But I'm also thankful that it was actually never added to the game. Mineshafts in Minecraft have gone through a lot of different redesigns. And back in beta 1.8, if you looked at these, you'd actually see that there was no fences in sight. Rather, the caves were supported by these full wooden plank beams, which makes it a lot more cramped. Which I guess you could argue is fair for the aesthetic of a mine shaft, but the fence alternative really looks a lot better. And then again, in recent versions, we saw that our mine shafts are no longer left unsupported when they generated in the air. But instead, things like oak logs and chains were added to certain sections so that they would be able to fly up. Which not only makes them look better, but it also adds in a use for chains. And considering we can't use them to craft chain mail, I think that's fair. Nowadays, Minecraft Endermen look a lot different from how they used to look. And I'm not just talking about the fact that they used to be able to generate as an albino Enderman, but even before that, in the pre-releases of Minecraft, the Enderman that we saw originally had green eyes. And those were changed to purple to explain that the Ender Dragon had some kind of influence over them. And on top of the green eyes, they also generated a thick smoke around them and made zombie sounds, if anything. Which, fighting an Enderman and having it make those kind of sound effects both feels more grotesque and silly. So, we can see why it was eventually changed for the full release, and thankfully so. The eyes of Ender used to be a big waste of time, since they wouldn't always lead you to the closest stronghold. And what that would mean is that sometimes, it might be pointing you to one that you're nowhere near to, even if you're standing right above the closest one. And why did this bug happen? I'm not exactly sure, but it did get fixed in 1.6.1, so thankfully we don't have to worry about it anymore. If you played Minecraft back in the day, then you know that these boats would break all the time. But part of that was by design, since in 2012, you could only exit a boat or minecart if you broke the vehicle. And without the ability to left shift to dismount, that means that we could cause certain situations where you softlocked yourself in that boat, completely unable to get out. Which is definitely the saddest way to lose your hardcore world. That's just brutal. Brightness plays a critical role in the game's atmosphere, which is why it's always struck me as weird that the developer set the slider by default to the lowest setting of Moody. It's like when you subscribe to a channel for notifications on all uploads, but then YouTube still asks you to ring the bell to actually do that. It makes no sense. No, oh, and thanks for subscribing by the way. But now it seems that Mojang's changed their ways, as now when you start up Minecraft, the brightness will now default to 50 instead. As we know it today, TNT has a 100% drop rate, which makes it indispensable for mining your resources with a tunnel bore like so. But that only got updated in 1.14, and back in 2012, you would have to mine out everything by hand, or risk losing a good amount of your resources if you used a TNT block like so. With this one bucket, 
like it, we can decimate this ocean. Let me show you how. See, back in 2012, water needed a solid block below it to generate an infinite water source. Meaning if we just grab a water bucket like so, this whole ocean will be completely washed out. And you can understand why they'd fix that in 1.5. Let's be honest, dispensers are an annoying block to craft. Since there's no good way to quick craft items with a non-stackable in the recipe, it takes a long time to make a lot. But would you believe it, these used to be even worse to craft. Pre 1.13, we needed full health bows to craft them. And it's a pain that I'm glad we no longer have. Grass path blocks can add a nice bit of detail to any roads that you plan on making. But since it's addition, it's been quite annoying to work with. Since you can only make this path block with grass, if you broke the block and then placed it back with dirt, you need to wait for the grass to spread before you even fix it. Well, that's no longer an issue, since you can now make this with dirt, coarse dirt, podzel, and mycelium. Thankfully so. Now, although the wither skeleton's been in the game since 1.4, they didn't get their own spawn egg until 1.11, which is just weird to think about since how else were you gonna get one of these things? I mean, the summon command didn't exist back then, so you're kind of out of options. Proper capitalization clearly means a lot to me. I mean, it's the reason why I'm skipped the tutorial and not skip the tutorial. So fortunately, 1.16 proof Mojang is also on that same page. Now, when you're editing a sign, it says edit sign message with consistent capitalization, which I've got to say looks quite a bit nicer. Zombie piglins used to look like this. Back when they were first announced, they'd exposed red flesh in their texture and they didn't hold any kind of weapon, which made them look a lot more like zombies than we're used to. But that version of the pigmen never made it into the game, and they were changed to a green color before its release. Zombie pigmen weren't the only nether mob that got a makeover though. During development, blazes originally had no eyes, and they just float around without any expression. But according to Jeb, this made it look more like a yellow rock than a mob, so the eyes were added in to give it more personality. Game development isn't always a perfect process. Like, sometimes you go to code a pig and instead make a terrifying monster. And while it's a fun story, it's apparently not a one-off. In the development video for the Village and Pillage update, Mojang revealed that foxes originally looked like this whole mess. And now I'm both disappointed and relieved this never made it in the final version. Clearly, Minecraft's textures have seen a lot of changes over the years, but one of the strangest of which is how wooden planks initially used to look. Since way back in the pre-classic days of Minecraft, when you crafted your oak into oak planks, you would have gotten something like this, which looks more than a little sad in both color and texture. But don't worry, it got even worse. For after this, we got this texture where it looked gray, if anything. And that might be good for dead wood, but it's not the kind of thing I want to use to build my house. And that's why it eventually became this texture that we know from Java Edition Classic. Dark mode is all the rage these days. From your Discord to your desktop, it's the main way that we operate. And while there are texture packs that add in things like a dark mode inventory and UI, Mojang also threw their hat in the ring with this update. Now it's possible to go into the accessibility settings and enable a dark mode monochromatic start screen, which is gonna make playing late at night a lot easier on the eyes. Although elytras are great for transportation, they're obviously not much when it comes to protection. But ever since 1.19.4, that's been a little bit more easy to bear with. Since now, you can swap the equipped gear that you have in your hotbar just by right-clicking them with your hand. So in an instant, you can switch from your traveling elytra into your battle chest plate and be a lot better equipped for any bad guys that come your way. And then, if you're not ready for the fight, switch right back to the elytra, go for your rockets, and get out of there. You definitely got a lot of options on how you can tackle this. Since now, potion colors have changed to be a lot more distinct since 1.19.4. And now you'll see that these match up better to the particle effects that you get when you drink them. Which can be a big help for once you recognize which one of these is which, but it's also hard to call this any kind of colorblind support. And so while this change is great, if we were to get something more akin to this kind of texture resource pack that we've shown off in the past, I think that'd be an even better step going forward. It's no secret that lava's the water of the nether, or I guess with glitches, water's the water of the nether, but at least the intended way, lava flows about the same speed that water does in the overworld. But it's only recently that lava's been changed to push entities when it's flowing. And that's allowed for much better nether farms that we can see here. In the past, a blaze farm would have to look like this mess with a bunch of pressure plates and pistons. Now you just add in some lava, it's a lot cleaner, and it makes more visual sense too. This is a Minecraft feature that used to exist, got broken for many years, and then now has been fixed again. Since the early days of Minecraft, it was made so that when you took damage, your camera would tilt in the direction that the damage came from. But strangely enough, this was broken when land was added into the game. Shavaxa goes into way better detail about this line of code than I ever could. What's interesting is that in recent updates, it's actually been fixed again. And honestly, after over eight years of being broken, it practically feels like a new feature. I'm sure to a lot of players it felt like it. Getting flint and feathers for arrows already feels expensive to craft, but it could have been so much worse. Since in the past in Alpha 1.0, you would actually use iron ingots to craft arrows instead of flint, which makes more sense for why these arrow textures have a white tip. But until you get a good iron farm, that would have been just way too costly. Good thing for Fletchers, I guess. Prior to 1.11, as you wore down the durability on one of your tools, not only would its health 
health bar decrease, but the colors of that health bar would get less and less vibrant as it went along, which honestly, I think you gotta pick one or the other. And Mojang seemed to agree, since now the durability colors stay vibrant all the way through, from a fresh diamond pickaxe to a broken tragedy. Totems of Undyne are an invaluable item to have, but apparently a good thing can get even better, since as of 1.16.2, these idols now give off 40 seconds of fire resistance as well. So if you have to use one, then at least it pulls out all the stops for you. 10 years ago, stairs used to be so much more annoying, since if you even went up them a little, it would force you to walk all the way up the stair. And it seems like Mojang noticed how annoying this was, cause that was quickly changed. Though not until the update 1.5. So if you're playing in versions before that, I'm deeply sorry. Back in 2012, we didn't have horses or elytras, so that meant that running was the best way to get around. But even then, it wasn't a perfect system. Because back then, we had to double tap the walk key to actually sprint. And we wouldn't get a dedicated sprint button until that was added in the game in 1.7.2. The crafting recipe book is a great resource to have, but while it's useful here, it hasn't always been the best implemented. And you'd see as much if you had a potion effect since it was usually hidden behind. But now we see these effects along the right side of the screen, and we can even hover over them to see the time remaining. Minecraft's credits are historically a weird sight to see. Going on for a total of 27 minutes and 15 seconds, it's hard to even sit through the thing. I can't even say I've tried to read more than the first line. I always just skip it and move on. But if you want to give it a go, then the new update makes it a bit easier. Now, by holding down the space bar, you can speed at the playback of the end poem. Sure, the anvil is a great item, but it's definitely got its share of limitations. And while most of us are familiar with the too expensive limit on level costs, there also exists a character limit for item names. Though the problem started to be that some items that were added in already had too long of a name, such as the new wax lightly weathered cut copper stairs at 41 characters. So to avoid that hassle, the limit has now been changed from 35 characters right up to 50. We're all familiar with this nether portal design. It's iconic for sure, but back in the day, it was so iconic, it was the only one you could make. But luckily, as of 1.7.2, we've now had the option to give them a different width and height than the standard 4x5 that we were used to. And if you're in better condition, you can get a whole lot more creative for the designs you make. Just make sure you build all of them without corners, otherwise you're wasting obsidian. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right, and have a good one, alright?